Okay, this is after four coats of paint and before sanding and before the wax. And it's really smooth and really happy so far. But now, I, oh, I wanna show you that I went ahead and did the sides already. Ended up looking very, very gorgeous, right? But I have a special treat, which you probably saw in the thumbnail. I'm going to show you how I did that right now. Shine bright like a diamond. Of course, you want to make sure that you subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell. And then they have the options for you to set how you want to be notified about my channel. You can click all or occasional, but of course you want to know about all the fun on my channel. So click the all, including my creator post and click the okay button and you're all set. Thank you for subscribing. Okay, I'm going to put my chase on its side. It's easier to work that way. I'm going to be taking this glossy Mod Podge with a mixture of fine silver glitter. And initially I'm gonna apply this mixture on the side with a chalk paint brush, but I wouldn't recommend that. It's not meant for that. I don't know why I thought to use it. After doing research, the best brush to use to do this is a take line brush. Mod Podge have a brush that they use, that they say you can use with decoupage, and the material is a take line brush. So, but that brush is not the cheapest alternative. So I went to Joanne and they had a value pack of three jumbo brushes that were the fraction of the cost of that one small brush from the Mod Podge. And it works great. And the whole purpose of using that brush is so that you don't see the brush strokes after it dries. And it really does work. Now I'm taking this detailer brush and it's just a regular paint brush, just a small one, because I want to make sure that I have the Mod Podge and glitter only on the sides. I don't want it on the top. But even when I use that take line brush, you will see I didn't have to go through all of this, but I wanted you guys to see this part just in case, again, if all you have is the chalk paint paint brush you can still get it done i'm just want to show you the trial and error that i went to i really cannot stress how much i'm trying to make this project as easy for you as possible there's videos out there showing you how to do this but it's not videos out there showing you how to correct the mistakes if you make them so i'm trying to do both in this video showing you the mistakes i made and how to correct them and now this is the next day but you don't have to wait to the next day this is the Mod Podge and glitter again you only have to wait about 30 minutes at the most an hour in between coats you don't have to wet the chair down all you have to do is take that sandpaper that I got from the Dollar Tree it said P150 is a assorted sandpaper in a package and I'm just gonna sand it down wipe it down with the cloth Excuse the carpet, you guys. I was doing all types of projects. I will take care of that after I put my living room back together. And after you sand it down, get rid of the dust particles from the sandpaper. Here is the brush I was telling you about, the take on brush. And you'll be able to see how the Mod Podge applies a lot more evenly this way. I really was really happy with it. And I really like the fact that it came in three packs. So that way I was able to put on the first layer and I could, I didn't want it to stiffen up. So I would just wash it out of the first brush. And then I would just go on to the second brush for my next layer. I ended up doing three layers of Mod Podge and glitter. And then my fourth layer was just plain Mod Podge to seal everything in. Voila! Isn't that so beautiful, guys? Now I'm gonna go in now that all the glitter is applied, 
the clear coating. I'm taking the sand block from the Dollar Tree and sand it down again, just the top part of the chase. And I'm going to add the wax. I didn't want to do this before because I was concerned if I add the wax, if it was going to make the Mod Podge uh, mixture slippery. I didn't want to take the chance. So now I am taking that wax that I purchased from Hobby Lobby and I'm taking a regular white cloth and I am mixing in the cream wax to make sure that the, that the fabric is moisturized. So it helps with it not cracking. It helps with it feeling soft and it feels like a nice leather chase nail. I am extremely happy with the way that it turned out but don't forget we are not finished we still have to do these legs and add this rhinestone trim okay here is this they consider it to be iron on rhinestone trim um, of course we're not ironing it on but i think what made it iron on is like this material under it that made it kind of be more pliable so it has a little stretch to it so i'm only taking two pieces of those of the strip and cutting it all the way down so that i can have enough to do the whole chase and of course i wouldn't want it that wide anyway because it's just a trim to accent the chair i wanted to put it on the side so when i sit on it or anybody else sitting on it i'll have to worry about it peeling off i'm going to be taking the dupe for the e um 3,000, 6,000, I never can remember, from the Dollar Tree. And I'm going to be using that to apply this trim. And it worked out perfectly. I'm going to take this fist all adhesive that I purchased from the Dollar Tree. And I'm going to run a line of glue along the trim where I want to apply the rhinestone trim. I'm going to carefully place it exactly where I want it and then go back over it with my finger, making sure it's even and smooth. I did speed this part up just for time reasons, but I wanted to make sure it's gonna be even again and smooth, and you just take your finger and run it across the top, and it turned out perfect. Okay, now I'm taking off these legs. Of course, you can leave them black, but I wanted to paint them gold because I wanted my pop of gold. I'm making sure that I have my strews all in one place. So when it's time to put the legs back, I know exactly where they are. And I'm taking this metallic gold paint that I purchased from Hobby Lobby. And I'm going to be doing two layers of paint with those same tick line brushes that I purchased from Joann's. And by the way, I didn't show it, but I can explain it to you now. I did take some coarse sandpaper and by hand, I just took off the shiny layer of paint off of those legs. You don't have to remove the black covering completely. You just need to make sure that you take the shiny clear coat that they put on top of the legs so that the paint could adhere to the wood better. And I, after the first coat of paint overnight i did a second coat and it was all good to go and here we are with the finished results i think it turned out so beautifully the silver fine glitter gives it a nice metallic shimmery effect the rhinestone trim gives it a nice pop at night when you go past it you can see like little gleams of that comes off of the rhinestone it is so beautiful i love the way that it turned out and i also did the same technique on a different chair in my living room it is different fabrics but the result was the same i did it the exact same way and i'm going to be showing you that now Okay, as you recall, this is the other chair that I had in my home. And I did that chair the exact same way that I did the chase, the same techniques. All the steps were the exact same. And didn't that come out so stunning? It was no need for me to do a tutorial because, again, the exact same steps I did 
on the chase i did it the exact same way on this one as you can see the fabric was different this wasn't a faux fake a faux suede it was more like a velvet but it had like the texture that you see in it was already in the chair as hopefully you saw with the original picture and it just turned out so beautifully the same technique different fabrics still came out beautiful and it still gave it the same leather effect and it is stunning i got one leg gold the other leg i put contact paper i will be painting this one gold as well but before i did that i wanted you to be able to see again other options that you can have to do that may be differently in your home but you still can get the project done hopefully you guys love this tutorial and you would try this in your home be creative I know it was a lot of ups and downs, trials and errors, but it was absolutely worth all of the hassle. If I had to do it all over again, I would have did one chair at a time. <laughs> it's almost like I started on this other chair and me being impatient, not wanting to wait for one to dry, I would go to the other one. But when the trials and errors started happening, I wish I would have concentrated on the one. But again, I did all that for you guys. And as you can see, this technique works on faux suede and faux velvet. Of course, I would do an updated living room tour. Isn't it amazing how that pop of gold on the furniture give it a whole different look? Just look at this, guys. Yas, 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 yas. Yas, look at that. <laughs> more projects to come family i love you guys and as always be your own kind of beautiful because you my love are beautiful see you next time